So now in this video, we're going to look at the LM358 op amp as a comparator. So it's a pretty uh, straightforward circuit. We'll look at it in more detail coming up. But right now, we're looking at the voltage of the trim pot. It's going to what is called the non-inverting input. So there's a couple inputs that look at voltages. So the input is seeing that voltage. And so the output is low. We can tell that because the LED is off. And we raise the voltage of the uh, trim pot there until we get to that point, which is about half of the power supply voltage, 2.5 volts. We set that voltage with those two resistors there. So we can change the voltage that uh, this changes at really simply. But the main thing is we have to get this voltage to that uh, voltage that we set. If it's below that voltage, the output goes low. If it's above that voltage, the output goes high right there. So there you can see that was the voltage changing. We can measure the voltage that's being set. So right there you can see that was the point where it changed. Now let's look whether it was higher or lower, depending on whether the output was higher or lower. So right now we're below that uh, 2.5 volts. We'll go above 2.5 volts. And there you can see one thing with this output the reason why we can use a single supply op amp is it goes to the negative rail. So we can just use, in this case, 5 volts and 0 volts to power this. A lot of op amps need a split power supply where ground is actually halfway between the positive and negative rails. So we'll talk about that in different videos. Just uh, be aware, if you're using a single supply like this, the uh, standard uh, power, you'll need a single supply op amp. This one can do both. So in any case, right now you can see the voltage of the output. Well, it's high, we can also go low. Let's go back high. Now we're gonna go to the positive rail. So there you can see we lost some voltage right there. And with this op amp, you can expect to lose about two volts from the positive rail. So it will go down to the negative rail. So if you need the full voltage, you can have the load powered by the positive side of the power supply and then sync to the negative rail through the op amp. But you cannot uh, output the uh, positive rail from the op amp and go to the negative rail. You just gotta be aware that you're gonna lose probably about a couple volts. Looks like we're losing about a volt and a half right now. So now the first thing we're gonna do, we cleared off the board except for the jumpers. They're a little uh, harder to insert and uh, take out than components, but in any case, there you can see we have here an LM358 and so there's more part numbers and uh, letters and they may indicate like when it was made and whatnot. You can look that up on the data sheet. Main thing is at the top we can see LM358 looks like it was made by on semiconductor and N. It's some kind of improvement probably from the original version. Again you can check the uh, data sheet for all those meanings. Not terribly important but uh, we have here the uh, pin layout. So there's one op amp on the left side, that was the one we are using, and one on the right side. We do have to power the op amp though. And so we put uh, V plus directly to the positive rail. Since we're using a single supply, pin number four goes to the negative rail, which is our zero volt reference point. If we were using a split power supply, zero volt is halfway between V positive and V negative, so you would put it to the negative rail, and uh, ground would uh, be set at another point. So now to begin with, for the output, I have this little jumper going across there to the other side of the board so that I can work my way down. I'll uh, get rid of that resistor. It's not part of the output. So now here we have the actual circuitry for the uh, comparator circuit right there. So we'll zoom a little bit, make it a bit easier to see. And for the output, we're gonna take an LED. So we may work with five volts, which we were, or 10 volts. So for 10 volts, it'd be a good idea to have a 470 ohm resistor protecting the LED. We can either use red or green. Green will be brighter, even though it will have slightly less current. So uh, let's just go red right now, doesn't matter. But uh, in any case, other than uh, for brightness. So we have the uh, red LED and its protective resistor. So pretty straightforward. That's coming from the output, the top pin right there. Now, 
you can see that's how they indicate on the op amp schematics it looks like this that's also the uh, schematic for comparator and so really you want to look at the part number hopefully they include that in there otherwise you have to figure out if your op amp can go to the rails or whatever else it needs to do and so here you can see we have the two inputs so they're always the op amp is always looking at both of their voltages and uh, both of the inputs that's the inverting input non-inverting input and uh, the output depends on the uh, voltage difference there if you give feedback it tries to hold the voltage to the same point and so that would be the topic for other videos now we're just looking at if the non-inverting input is lower than the inverting input the output will be low if it's higher the output will be high and so just to make this simple we're going to take two 100 kilo ohm resistors and uh, first this one I'm going to put to the negative rail right there and uh, you can see one of them goes to the negative rail so these are high value resistors you can use high value resistors because the inputs do not input current a little bit of it slips through but for the most part it just looks at the voltage and this may have uh, millions of ohms of uh, resistance I'm not sure but probably at least hundreds of thousands of ohms of resistance and uh, that bent the pin that's uh, a bit annoying so let's see if it goes in better that way there there we go so one resistor equal value resistors to the positive rail and then uh, one resistor to the negative rail we'll kind of zoom in and hopefully get a little better look at that right there positive rail. so they're both going to pin number two second pin down that's the inverting input the negative sign a lot of times you'll just see negative sign uh, especially in written form now we have the uh, trim pot so of course it has three pins and the bottom pin and the top pin they connect to a resistive element they're fixed in position the uh, middle pin is connected to a wiper that slides across the resistive element and so we can go from there to there and uh, so the halfway point is to the right for this the way that we have this now and so we're going to put the two end pins to the power supply and the uh, third pin we're going to put over there and so we have a gap right there that we can take a jumper and then we'll take this variable voltage and go to the non-inverting input right there so remember the output wants to be more like the non-inverting input and so the jumpers kind of in the way that's why I had it like this earlier I just scooted this back so that it was over the wires and gave me space to put the jumper so hopefully that's the middle pin it's a little hard to see but in any case there we go so we should be all set the power supply is off right now let's uh, the output is off you know it, you have to actually unplug this to completely turn it off but there we go we're on the trim pot looks like it's down a little bit so let's go up in voltage and the output is high we go down the output is low it's a comparator so now we looked at using 5 volts right there and that's why we used a 470 ohm resistor instead of we could have gone down to 220 ohm uh, plenty fine again that's with the uh, red LED when it comes to brightness and uh, We'll actually have a little less current with the green LED, but it's just naturally brighter. So it blocks a little more voltage. And in fact, as we saw before, it takes almost 3 volts to get the green LED to light up. We only have about 3.5 volts coming at the output right now. So it's dropping about a volt and a half from the 5 volts. What we can do, we'll see the green LED get brighter, but we're going to raise the voltage to 10 volts now. And you can see now we have quite a bit more current going going right now. And that's again because the output doesn't output the full voltage. So as we go up now it's probably outputting about 8.5 at the output of the uh, op amp. And so higher voltages you'll, you'll get more of the uh, power supply voltage percentage wise in any case. But uh, in any case there you can see we go below halfway because that's the voltage we set and the output goes low above halfway the output goes high 
So exactly the same. So as long as you have your set voltage and your sensor or whatever, your manual control, wired to the same uh, supply voltage, you will get the same effect when it goes below halfway for whatever reason the output goes low above halfway the output goes high so that works for batteries or whatnot you know if you if you happen to have a weird battery that starts at 10 volts and can drain down to 5 volts that's a very unusual uh, property but the output would lose power in this case but otherwise the circuitry all works exactly the same and so that's uh, one nice thing about uh, these op amps. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.